Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air, the high drama in court. The prosecutor who brought the case against Donald Trump suddenly in court defending herself, and you'll see it. Also tonight, we're tracking those two winter storms moving in already tonight, the 30-vehicle pileup. First tonight, that unexpected moment in Georgia playing out late today. The Fulton County DA suddenly taking the stand, defending herself against allegations of misconduct, saying, you think I'm on trial, these people are on trial, referring to Trump and his alleged co-conspirators. And what happens to this case if she's disqualified? Steve Osinsami, live in Georgia. Also breaking tonight, the blockbuster headline late today, the special counsel in the Hunter Biden case now charging a confidential FBI source, accusing him of lying about Hunter Biden and his father and their role in Ukraine business. Pierre Thomas standing by with what this all means tonight. The criminal case that is moving forward tonight in New York City, a judge telling Donald Trump today the trial will begin in weeks over the alleged payment to Stormy Daniels to silence her to keep it from the voters. Aaron Katursky with what the judge told Trump today in court. That horrific, deadly shooting at the Super Bowl celebration and what we've now learned tonight, the motive, what started this. 22 people shot, nine of them children. Tonight, the images coming in, the massive truck explosion in Los Angeles, nine firefighters hurt, two in critical condition at this hour. Tonight, Russia and that nuclear threat, the meeting on Capitol Hill today over Russia's suspected desire to put nuclear weapons in space and what lawmakers told us when they came out of that briefing today. Tonight, we're tracking those two fast-moving storms right across the country, the Midwest, then the East. The images coming in at this hour, the 30-vehicle pileup. Authorities say be prepared for snow and ice. America's new mission to the moon tonight. It would be America's first moon landing in more than 50 years. Tonight, the NBA player arrested for allegedly attacking another player before the big game. And the missing wedding ring. You're not going to believe where it was found. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Thursday night. And we do begin tonight with that stunning moment in court, the high drama playing out in Georgia late today. The prosecutor who brought the case against Donald Trump and his alleged co-conspirators taking the stand herself to defend herself. The dramatic moment when D.A. Fonnie Willis showed up in the courtroom today insisting she wanted to testify, crossing the room there to the witness stand, taking the oath. On the stand, Willis was defiant, fielding questions about alleged misconduct. At one point, though, Willis telling the lawyer questioning her, you're confused, you think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. But could Fonnie Willis be removed from the case and what happens to the case against Trump if that happens? ABC's Steve Osinsami from Georgia tonight. Dave Willis, how are you feeling about your testimony? In a stunning change of heart, the Fulton County prosecutor accused of profiting from hiring her lover to help lead the election interference case against former President Trump and 18 others, walked right up to the judge and said she was ready to testify. I'll make that. Fonnie Willis called the lawyer who called her here a liar. It is a lie. It is a lie. It's highly offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they try to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them. Don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. It is a rare event for a prosecutor to sit on the witness stand and take questions from the lawyers of clients she's trying to convict. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. The attorney for one of the defendants who's doing most of the digging here wants her client's case thrown out and is asking the judge to remove Willis from the election interference case because she enjoyed romantic getaways that were allegedly paid for by special prosecutor Nathan Wade, who Willis hired. He paid for the flight and the cruise on Royal Caribbean that time. So yes, he paid. He tells me how much it is and I give him the money back. If you tell me it's a G, then you're gonna get a thousand dollars. Whatever it is, I didn't ever make him produce receipts to me. Whatever he told me it was, I gave him the money back. Willis told the court that she paid Wade the money back, sometimes thousands of dollars in cash. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. Willis says that she and Wade ended their romantic relationship in August of last year. It was his ex-wife who helped make the relationship public during their bitter divorce by sharing receipts of some of those trips with his boss. 
So all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. One of the big arguments is over when Willis and Wade started dating. The two say it was months after she hired him. But Willis's former friend and employee, who says she was forced to resign, testified today through a video call that the two have been romantic since 2019, a year before the election. Did you observe them do things that are uh, common among people having a romantic relationship? Yes. Such as, can you give us an example? Hugging, kissing. So let's bring in Steve Osinsami live from Georgia tonight. And Steve, aside from all of this that played out this afternoon on live television, the cable network's carrying it, uh, the bigger picture here, what happens if the DA is disqualified? Does the case against Trump and the alleged co-conspirators move forward here? Well, David, the state could assign the case to a different prosecutor who would then decide whether or not to move the case forward. But there are plenty of choices of prosecutors in the state of Georgia if you're looking for one who wants to stop this. Even so, it would still be a tall order to remove Willis from this case. David? We'll see. Steve Osasami leading us off here tonight. Steve, thank you. We're going to turn now to the criminal case that is moving forward, the case against Donald Trump in New York City over an alleged payment to Stormy Daniels to allegedly buy her silence and keep it from the voters. The former president was in court today, the judge rejecting Trump's attempt to dismiss the case, saying it will begin in weeks. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Eric Katursky. Tonight, the first criminal trial of a former American president, a judge has now determined, with Donald Trump sitting right there in front of him, will begin in just weeks. The judge saying today jury selection will begin March 25th. Trump had pushed to dismiss and delay, just as he has in his three other criminal cases. But this one will move forward. In this case, Trump is accused of trying to hide from voters allegations of a tryst with porn actress Stormy Daniels by buying her silence for $130,000. I'm going to have to sit here for months on a trial. I think it's ridiculous. It's unfair. Trump, who has pleaded not guilty, argued the case is political, but the judge refused to dismiss it, saying although defendant argues he has been impermissibly targeted, defendant has failed to carry the burden of demonstrating disparate treatment. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg was the first prosecutor to file criminal charges against Trump and now will be the first to put him on trial. The defense complained the timing of the trial would make it impossible for Trump to campaign, but the judge said that's no legal reason to delay it. David? Aaron Katursky with us. Aaron, thank you. And the other breaking news tonight, the blockbuster headline. Tonight we have just learned that the special counsel in the Hunter Biden case is now charging a confidential FBI source accusing him of lying about Hunter Biden and his father and their role in Ukraine business. So what does this mean now amid the accusations on the Hill against the Bidens? Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, the special counsel investigating Hunter Biden filing criminal charges against a former FBI informant who allegedly lied to agents about Hunter Biden's business dealings with Ukrainian energy company Burisma. Special Counsel David Weiss charging Alexander Smirnov provided the FBI false derogatory information, claiming Burisma executives told him they had hired Hunter Biden when his father was vice president to, quote, protect us through his dad from all sorts of problems. The FBI determining that was not true. The indictment further charges Smirnov lied when he told agents Burisma executives paid the Bidens a $5 million bribe when Joe Biden was vice president. The special counsel now saying the defendant's story to the FBI was a fabrication. It comes as House Republicans are moving ahead to impeach the president. They have found no evidence he acted improperly, but have repeatedly leaned on the words of an FBI informant. Even a trusted FBI informant has alleged a bribe to the Biden family. And a highly credible FBI source alleges that Joe Biden received $5 million in exchange for pressuring for the firing of a Ukrainian prosecutor. Tonight, a congressional source telling ABC News the FBI informant the Republicans were talking about is the same man who was indicted today for lying to the FBI about Joe and Hunter Biden. The alleged motive for lying, the special counsel says Smirnov had bias against then-candidate Joe Biden. House Republicans say it's still full steam ahead on impeachment. David. Pierre Thomas with the breaking news here. Pierre, thank you. We turn now to that horrific and deadly shooting at the Super Bowl celebration in Kansas City. Authorities now say the motive appears to have been a fight 
that then led to that eruption of gunfire. And tonight here, new images of the moment the shots rang out. Just an extraordinary crowd had assembled, the sound sending people running for their lives, scattering to get away. As you know, one person was killed, 22 people were shot, nine of them were children. ABC's Alex Perez in Kansas City with how this all started. Tonight, authorities in Kansas City say the hail of bullets that erupted at the end of the Chiefs' Super Bowl parade was the result of a fight that escalated into gunfire, and two of the three people in custody are juveniles. Preliminary investigative findings have shown there was no nexus to terrorism or homegrown violent extremism. This appeared to be a dispute between several people that ended in gunfire. The result of that fight, 23 people shot, at least half of them children under the age of 16, the youngest just eight years old. Jacob Gooch, his wife, and one of his sons all recovering from gunshot injuries to the feet and legs. And I see smoke coming out of my ankle, people rushing me. I turned to try to start running and I collapsed to the ground because obviously I can't, couldn't run, had a, been shot through my ankle. <laughs> Investigators poring over videos like these obtained by TMZ Sports that show people treating the injured among the chaos. The two men seen in this video tackling a possible suspect were thanked by law enforcement today for their bravery. I didn't hesitate. It was just, just do it. So I went to go tackle him, and another gentleman did the same thing. Paul Contreras and Trey Filter were both there with their families. I remember the officers pulling my feet off of them. Um, and at that point, I was just looking for my wife and kids. And watch closely as Trey's wife, Casey, moves a gun away from that possible suspect. The shooting happened just as the Chiefs were leaving the rally stage, several members of the team comforting fearful fans, offensive lineman Trey Smith helping hide people in a closet. Um, you know, one of the things we kept saying is everyone relax, you know, stay calm, you know, stay focused, we're good. Tragically, Lisa Lopez Galvan, a well-known local radio host and the mother of two children, was killed. Her brother, remembering the 43-year-old as very bubbly and a big fan of her chiefs. This is another example of a real loving, real human whose life was taken tragically with a senseless act. And David, some encouraging news tonight. Just three children remain hospitalized, and all of the children are expected to make a full recovery. David? Well, that is good news tonight, Alex. Thank you. We turn now to Russia and that nuclear threat we reported on last night here. Tonight, the meeting on Capitol Hill today, lawmakers briefed by the president's national security advisor over Russia and its desire to put a nuclear weapon in space. But what lawmakers on the Hill said today when they came out of that meeting? Rachel Scott on the Hill again tonight. Tonight, the White House confirming U.S. intelligence is tracking a Russian effort to deploy nuclear weapons into space. But spokesperson John Kirby seeking to reassure the American people. This is not an active capability that's been deployed. There is no immediate threat to anyone's safety. We are not talking about a weapon that can be used to attack human beings or cause physical destruction here on Earth. Sources tell ABC News Russia wants the nuclear weapons to target critical satellites, key to communications and military operations. We're taking this potential threat very, very seriously, and we are examining what the, the, the best next steps are and what our options might be. The existence of Russia's plans was not meant to become public. It only did because the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner, issued a warning, calling on the White House to declassify information about what he called a serious national security threat. Turner did that even though he knew the White House planned to brief him and other top lawmakers today. That briefing ended just moments ago. I think the bottom line is, is that we all came away with a very strong impression that the administration is taking this very seriously and that the administration has a plan in place. Democrats saying tonight it's now all the more urgent for Congress to approve funding for Ukraine and its war against Vladimir Putin. It's very troubling that you've got Vladimir Putin now not only marching into Ukraine and smashing up a democracy there and destabilizing elections around the world, but actually putting nuclear technology into space in order to knock out satellites. The White House says it will continue to keep members of Congress fully informed with senators expected to be briefed in the coming days. Tonight, the administration is urging Congress to pass additional aid to Ukraine, saying the cost of inaction is stark.
David. Rachel Scott, live on the Hill tonight. Thanks, Rachel. Now to the images coming in today. The fiery explosion in Los Angeles. Nine firefighters injured, two of them in critical condition tonight. Surveillance capturing the moment a truck fueled by natural gas exploded. One of its 100-gallon natural gas tanks blowing up. The firefighters rushed to the hospital. Matt Rivers from Los Angeles tonight. Tonight, this is the moment a natural gas truck exploded in Los Angeles. Smoke rising into the air, nine firefighters injured, two of them critically. We had a small mass casualty incident, tragically, of our own members. The truck, which ran on natural gas instead of diesel or gasoline, catching fire shortly before 7 a.m. in the Wilmington neighborhood, firefighters rushing to the scene. Just six minutes later, one of the 100-gallon compressed natural gas tanks exploding. The ball of flame was as high as these telephone poles, and it actually uh, did explode one of the transformers nearby. The nine injured firefighters transported to nearby hospitals, but the fire continuing to burn. First responders concerned the second cylinder could explode at any moment. Make sure we stay 100 feet back. We have one more cylinder that is not exploded. More than 150 firefighters and hazardous material specialists called in. The gas from the second tank slowly released. And David, all injured firefighters officials say have now been stabilized while the truck's driver was unharmed. David. Matt Rivers from Los Angeles. Matt, thank you. When we come back here, we're tracking those two fast-moving winter storms tonight, moving across the country, snow and ice, the Midwest and then the east. Already tonight, images coming in of a 30-vehicle pileup. And tonight, the NBA star arrested. What he's accused of doing before the game. Tonight, we're tracking those two fast-moving storms, bringing more snow to the east. Snow and ice blamed for a massive 30-vehicle pileup. This is outside Flint, Michigan. US-23 was closed in both directions for a time. Tonight, there are winter weather alerts from Michigan all the way across to Maine, up to six inches of snow possible in some areas. The second storm is right behind it. More snow from that system as well, potentially for Washington, D.C., to Philadelphia, to New York City. That would be on Saturday. We'll continue to track it. When we come back tonight, news of an NBA star under arrest, what he's accused of doing to another player. And the missing wedding ring tonight, the nearly impossible discovery. To the index of other news tonight, Detroit Pistons star Isaiah Stewart arrested and charged with assaulting another NBA player. Authorities say Stewart punched the Phoenix Suns' Drew Eubanks during a confrontation hours before last night's game in Phoenix. Eubanks says he was walking to the Suns' locker room when it happened. Stewart now facing a possible NBA suspension. The Pistons say they are investigating. Tonight, America's new mission to the moon, SpaceX's Falcon rocket blasting off from the Kennedy Space Center, carrying intuitive machines, their lunar lander. It's expected to touch down on the moon's surface one week from tonight. It would be the first time the U.S. has landed on the moon in more than 50 years. When we come back here tonight, the missing wedding ring, the wife, she knew the moment she lost it, but she couldn't believe what happened next. Finally tonight here, she wore her wedding ring for 30 years and felt it the moment it slipped off. What happened next is America Strong. Tonight in Greenville, South Carolina, Melanie and Thomas Harper married 30 years this summer. Melanie making a drop off at her local recycling center when she could feel the wedding ring on her finger slip off. Suddenly, lost in a bin full of paper and plastic, she poured through everything. I stayed for quite a while, went through everything, trying to, to find it. Melanie then writing to the Greenville Public Works Department, knowing it was nearly impossible, but asking them if they had found the ring when they processed the recycling, and if so, to contact her. The crew read her email, and this is crew supervisor Jeff Hammond. I was first thinking, I said, well, what can we do to get this ring? I said, I know if it was my wife, uh, I'd have to get it. So when I got in in the morning, I talked to the guys. I said, let's not dump the container. Let's, uh, let's dump it on the ground and, and search and see if we could find it. They would search through this pile in the parking lot. Hours later, crew member Travis Golden finding the ring. Hey, hey David. David. Right here tonight, Travis and Jeff on that diamond in the rough. I just started moving stuff out the way. And what do you know? We would hope somebody would do the same for us if we lost something that valuable. Hi, David. Melanie with her ring tonight, grateful. They really do such a good job behind the scenes every single day, and I'm thrilled that they are getting uh, well-deserved recognition. Everything they do every day really deserves our thanks and gratitude. Tonight, Melanie with those workers showing the ring and still stunned they were able to find it. That ring back where it belongs. Travis deserves some major props tonight, along with all those workers. Good night.
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.